I became Christian, yeah. I got how, baptized. How, when was that? I got baptized in 2022, but I became a Christian in 2017. What what sparked that that awakening? Um my real name is Madangi, right? And it's the goddess of music and spoken word. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, in Hinduism, which I didn't know. So I grew up an atheist. Even when I came out as MIA, I was an atheist. And my dad always said religion is used as a, it's a tool for social control. And he was raised Catholic, though. And so then I guess after I made the Maya album is when I found out what my name meant. So I became a Hindu. And so then I went down the path of Hinduism and studied it and tried to understand it a lot. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, five years into it, I had a vision of Jesus. Mm. Yeah, while I was awake. It makes sense. It gives you peace now because that I, I don't know where else to find it. Even Hinduism, I have a lot of people around me who are, it's chaotic and therapy doesn't have the answer. Science doesn't really have the answer. And science is a study to me, mm-hmm. but it's not the answer. And and I was very judgmental. My mom was a Christian for a long, what well, is, and I was very judgmental and always felt like, I'm an intellectual and I look down at Christians as something it, as it like naive people followed because oh, yeah. they had nothing else. Yep. But I don't mm. think that anymore. Wow. Yeah. All right. Naive. What do y'all think about that? That's powerful. Did y'all know about, did you, you knew about this already? I knew about, she, I knew she got saved, but I didn't know, I didn't know her, I didn't know her name was a Hindu guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Hey. Y'all know what y'all name y'all children, people, <laughs> before right. you say their name. Wow. But it's an awesome testimony, though. I I, I agree with um, what uh, VC saying. It was a beautiful testimony of God mm-hmm. showing up. And, yeah. And I, my only thing about her is um, sometimes she does get very deep in conspiracy theories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my prayer is that she would stand on the word. You know what I mean? And really like, because when you live by conspiracies, them joints. Yeah. And I'm saying that from experience. You know what I mean? Conspiracy J. J. Yeah. I had to stop, bro. I had to step back and be like, okay. What is the Bible? It, yeah. A lot of stuff always in my life for, for, for some stuff brings me back to that. Um, and this is why I always like Trip Lee. Trip Lee's video, Real Vision, where mm-hmm. people are, the one dude is walking around and people are in bullhorns and mm-hmm. saying all types of stuff. And he's writing it down and trying to figure it out and come to the Bible. And the Bible is the final answer for him. Mm-hmm. That's always been something for me personally, where it's like when you hear something, it's like, but does that and, and God and, and the power of the Holy Spirit just be like, that's not right, though. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, and it makes me go study, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and search and stuff. Mm-hmm. What this brought up to my mind was um, that whole fear that you have or that question that comes up of, well, I know about God, but what about the people in this country or that country where their main religion is something else? Yeah. What's going to happen to them? And I, the the assurance I always felt is that Jesus knows how to get to his people. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he he can give you a vision he can appear just like he appeared to Paul. Yeah. Yeah. It's like somebody that was the furthest away from God possible, right? Yeah. Killing Christians, right? Yeah. He can appear to him. He can he's going to find his people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that that gave me comfort that that something like this can happen. I would say though pray for her because there is something that she said that was a little concerning. Um I had to cut around a lot of the conspiracy yeah. stuff cuz it didn't really apply. But she said something to the effect of um when I was a Hindu, I was pursuing truth. Jesus appeared to me and he's the truth. So I, so I'm following him because I'm all about truth. And you know, there may be another truth later. And I was like, Oh mm. shoot. So just, mm. just but pray. But that's why I'm saying get in that Bible. Yeah. Yeah. It's Cause the Bible will like, when you read the word and I think that's what we have with, with, with a lot of new believers and people who've been following, following church honestly more than they've been following because there's a lot of people that just don't read the bible because essentially i mean that that's not the wrong attitude but yeah. it just shows that man are you convinced are you convinced you know I mean, any truth could sway yeah. you basically yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. you're saying you have yeah. to be convinced yeah. man yeah. so if, if it's still like up for grabs and that makes me nervous and then not just for her but just for people who feel that way why do you think discipleship lacks in churches 
What's what is it, is it messy? Is discipleship messy that people mm. don't want to get involved with? I think there, I think mm. there are plenty of church communities all over the world where there is no problem. It's just that we hear about these are like these are um, um, edge cases, right? This yeah. person is super famous. This person mm. is super famous. This person goes to this mega mega church. Mm. That's not the norm. There's millions of small communities where but, this is happening naturally. Yeah. But discipleship seems like I keep hearing that word like. The church need a disciple, and I'm like, what's the pro? Do people don't want? And that's another thing too. You you can't go across the the water if you don't want the water. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Is that the person got to say, yeah, I want to be discipled, or do you think churches are not just offering discipleship? Because small groups is good, but it's not like mm. hard old school discipleship. You know what I mean? I think discipleship costs. I mm. think discipleship is an investment. Mm -hmm. Like you truly discipling somebody, you're doing life with people. Yeah. And I think the way the world is set up now, we live in this microwave society where everybody just wants instant results. Everybody's always on the go. Everybody's always moving. Mm -hmm. You got to have patience uh, with discipleship. Yeah. Because when you spend a time with somebody, you may not see them develop or their relationship with God get to a certain place in a certain time frame that you feel like it should get there. Mm -hmm. So are you going to continue to stick in there with that person and be patient through the highs and the lows? Yeah. Um, sometimes they may backtrack, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes a struggling believer can look like an unbeliever, you know what I'm saying? So you go through ugly, ugly processes with people when you talk about discipleship. And so we in a culture where people are ask you how you doing in church, they really don't want to know. They just ask you that because it's just the, the thing to say at church. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we have that kind of culture, who's really going to sit back and call somebody weekly and check on them, going to sit down yeah. and have lunch with them, go yeah. have dinner with them, take them over here to the game, go over here and spend time with them, go to the school when they're having programs. Like, you really yeah. invest it. And, and I yeah. think that's what it is. It's like, People want a, a instant faith. Like mm. you should be, you should be healed by now. You should be delivered by now. You should be have it figured out. And when you don't do that, people get impatient, get frustrated. Yeah. Not true. But do I always feel like this? And I know we move on. I always feel like it's more easy. I feel like churches seem like it's more easier to disciple youth than it is to disciple adults. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, which is yeah. interesting to me. That's just crazy. I, I don't know. It's I, you know how I I don't remember who told me this, but it, I, it didn't even apply to to Christian stuff but you know children have that childlike faith that Jesus was talking about yeah. now what they were the person that was talking to me related it to when you have to pull a tooth right yeah when you're a child your teeth are very soft it's easy to get them in and out but when you're an adult they, they're, they're solid right yeah. so a lot of these people they're they're so set in ways yeah. that discipling somebody is a challenge because you got to uproot a lot of stuff right mm. it's, it's a they have a stern base of what they believe yeah. is yeah. true yeah. that has to be taken all the way down so that's why it's easier because a kid doesn't really have a lot of history to yeah. go back on yeah. mm -hmm. they'll kind of they absorb whatever you tell them but as soon as they start getting their own opinions and start seeing the world and this and that now they think what they think what they think yeah Man, it's hard to break some of that stuff back down and give them the truth again. Yeah. So I think, like you said, a lot of people are just like, I don't got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. It's, it's, yeah. it's really a calling. You yeah. really have to really decide that I'm yeah. going to spend time, live life with this person, yep. deal with all the mess, yeah. deal with my own mess in the midst yeah. of that. Yeah. It's not like you don't have infinite time. You got yeah. problems too. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, it's really a challenge. I just see yeah. like it's so, it's so rewarding though when you think about it in the Bible, like yeah. people mm -hmm. discipling people yeah. and how – like God just was moving in yeah, those churches yeah, yeah. when they was discipling people. 